lip service. They will manipulate. They will exploit. But they intend no true respect for the founding premise of this nation's life, which is that God is the source of justice. Let's go to the phones. We have Steve Cooper on the line. Uh, I think you know Steve. He's with the Conservative Monitor, I believe. Hi, Steve. Oh, yes, hi. Um, thank you for taking my call. Uh, hi, uh, Dr. Keyes, it's an honor to speak with you, sir. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, you know, what I wanted to tell you what's troubling me is, um, you know, when John McCain had the hearing for his eligibility, um, you know, by the Democrats, uh, you know, they, they vetted him. He did not demand a hearing for Obama. So now, you know, this, this is troubling to me because he knew that there were pending lawsuits against Obama, and yet still he did not request that a hearing be, be done on Obama because they just did one on him. So now I was wondering, I think that we need to start shining the light in this direction because uh, I think he needs to be, uh, John McCain needs to be called out why he did not demand that uh, Obama uh, have a hearing, and this way we would not be in this, this mess in the first place. What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I think your, your question points to a couple of things. One, if you look at the overall pattern of action uh, by McCain in the 2008 election, uh, I think, and I have been quite clear about this on a number of occasions, is that it suggests quite clearly uh, that John McCain through that election. He lay down, as the phrase goes in boxer. It was a lay down. He, and he lay down and let Obama walk into the White House uh, and thereby served an overall purpose that was quite intended by certain elite forces in this country and in the world. Uh, and, and that that therefore explains. It explains why he didn't make effective use of this issue. It explains why uh, he was unwilling to represent the heart of the people of this country when they rejected a bailout that handed billions of dollars to the very folks who had caused the problem and refused even to look at, much less support, an alternative that was actually intended to address the problem without that kind uh, of money being handed to the banks. So the, the step across the Rubicon into socialism, which was taken in 2008, was a step that was taken with the active, eager cooperation of John McCain. He was so eager to get back to Washington and talk about it that he said he was even willing to forego a debate before right. the American people. He thought it was more important to get in the back room and hammer out that little surrender to socialism than it was to speak to the boss about why he should be appointed president at the elections in, the, in, in, in November. I thought that was indicative of his true priorities and who he thinks of as the true rulers in America, not the people of this country. Similarly, by the way, and, and your question about eligibility, uh, I am in the process now of writing a series at my blog. I, um, I, I am putting up the first piece of it this evening at loyaltoliberty.com. That is going to talk about uh, the real significance of the issues that involve citizenship and the question of citizenship. That's the eligibility issue. It's the anchor babies issue. It's the 14th Amendment repeal question. What's really going on right now with respect to what is being done across the board, even with some odd bedfellows emerging that cross these supposed sham party lines, right, where everyone seems to be agreeing, oh, we need to do something so that there will be no birthright citizenship in this country. No citizenship by birth. No birthright citizenship. You had this fellow, Bill Bray, from Texas, spouting a lot of nonsense in which he concluded that anybody's a citizen that the government uh, recognizes as a citizen. Y'all, that's the key to understanding where these people want to take us. They, they want to take us to a place where the government gets to define who a citizen is, where nobody has a birthright claim, a natural claim, a claim not that cannot be touched or manipulated by the government. What we presently have in this country, by the way, with the birth certificates and all, remember, they are certifying certain facts in a birth certificate. It is those facts that establish the claim to citizenship, not the government's action. That's really critical, because it means that the bulk of people who are citizens in this, in this country are citizens by virtue of a claim that has nothing to do 
with an exercise of the government's particular power in any given instance. All the government does is certify the facts. It doesn't actually have the authority to declare you, you're a citizen, that's it, I'm going to say that, uh, for most of us. Because our claim is based on something that, that is superior to government power. It's a natural claim. And it's a claim that comes about naturally because of a certain set of circumstances that define our natural right to be citizens of the United States. That's really critical. Uh, the 14th Amendment was was put in there to try to deal with the problem that had been created by the Dred Scott decision with respect to slaves where that natural right was being denied and they used a form of language intended to restore it but without naturalizing because they knew what the implications of that would be and again people are trying to say oh let's get rid of that do you know what's going to happen we're going to end up in a situation y'all where citizenship is defined by government fiat and where at any given moment, the people who happen to be in control of the government, of the Congress at any given time, will be able to pass laws saying, oh, this one's a citizen and that one's not. We've got a whole bunch of new citizens in here, and we're going to declare them citizens. It doesn't matter what anybody says, and so forth and so on. That's going to give them the ability to define the sovereign body of the people. Do you know what that means? They'll be able to define the ultimate sovereign in America and redefine it in such a way that it accords with whatever may be their little ideological or other agendas. When that happens, there will be no more government of, by, and for the people. And we'll be in danger of putting ourselves in the very situation that people found themselves in in certain of these ancient republics that were called democracies and all of this, but that were in fact the rule of a few people designated as citizens over many people who had been excluded from citizenship by fiat. Uh, the natural law, natural rights basis, of the understanding of government that we have in America precludes the elites from ever doing that to us again. And what these people are trying to do is quietly, shrewdly maneuver us into a position where without even putting that consequence on anybody's mind, they start to take over the business of letting government define citizenship without regard to natural right. This is a grave error, y'all, a grave error for the people of this country. And people will say, oh, and people just won't understand that and so forth. Well, I think we better get to a point where we start to understand the, under, the, the ideas without which this form of government can't survive. See, because I think that there are some people, I know it, I don't think it, I know it, because I was amongst them and studied with people who certainly understand the implications of abandoning the natural right understanding of citizenship. They know what it means. And they know exactly what the ultimate result will be in terms of destroying government of, by, and for the people in this country. So I think we better wake up. We seem to be dealing with narrow little issues in the 14th Amendment, the anchor baby, the immigration, the this, the that. No, we're not. We're dealing with the large issue of who rules, who is a citizen, who shall wield the sovereign power in our country. That's the ultimate decision of politics. And it was decided by our founders that in America... The key answers to those questions would be based upon regard for the will of God and the natural law framed in light of that will of God so that government wouldn't be able to boot people out of the political arena at will. I, I think we better pay attention to this because we're going down a road that, that will allow people to maintain the outward form of government of, by, and for the people while destroying its real substance. And that's exactly what some are hoping to achieve, in my opinion. There's no question that we are seeing in this country an attempt to do what has been done in other countries, where they have constitutions, they have votes, but they're window dressing. Mm -hmm. The decisions are made, and we're going to deal with that ourselves. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with Dr. Keyes. Thank you, Steve Cooper, for your call. And uh, we'll have uh, Dr. Marvin Scott join us. This is... Talk to Solomon.